my name is Dr. Norita Ahmad. I am a professor of information system and business analytics at the American University of Sharjah. I am also a director at Center for Teaching, Center for Innovation in Teaching and Learning at AUS. With me today, I have a very special guest, Dr. Sawa Bukheri. Dr. Salva Bukheri is a professor of civil engineering and sustainable construction project management at the American University of Sharjah. And she joined the university in 2006. Previously, she was a project analyst and consultant in oil and petrochemical in Virginia, USA. We have also conducted interviews with senior managers and leaders and produced podcasts for you to listen to at our 3D immersive experience at wilua.com. Visit there for a wealth of multimedia resources about women achievers in the Northern Emirates and the UAE. Our research is sponsored by the Sheikh Saud bin Sakar Al Qasimi Foundation for Policy Research. So I would like to welcome Dr. Sawa Bukheri with us today. Thank you so much, Sawa, for joining us. Um, if you do not mind, maybe you can just enlighten us a little bit with um, your background. Okay, um, uh, thank you, Dr. Narita, and uh, um, I think you guys are doing a very good job with this um, um, women in leadership and women achievers, and, and it highlights uh, some of the good things that are being done um, mm -hmm. f so that we can try to be as much of uh, the role models that we try to be uh, nice. to our students and uh, to the younger ladies around. Um, uh, my background is, uh, I, I, I like to call it interesting, <laughs> but uh, um, I was born and raised uh, in Khartoum, Sudan. Mm -hmm. uh, Khartoum, Sudan is interestingly where the, um, the Blue Nile and the White Nile uh, form or meet to form the River Nile. So mm -hmm. it's on the Nile confluence and um, that's always how I um, kind of viewed myself going forward. I, I, I think of myself as a, as a combination of many things. Uh, that resulted in who Selway is today, mm -hmm. and um, and um, I, I I guess uh, uh, I grew up in a uh, in a relatively um, easygoing family. So I was uh, um, I was the youngest of five uh, mm -hmm. by a huge gap, age gap, and um, and um, you know when they when the when you were the youngest, um, a lot of people think that you're spoiled, but technically it's just there there aren't many expectations of you. <laughs> <laughs> the parents are getting older and tired, and they um, they let you kind of run wild. So um, so what happened is um, I guess I, I developed a very kind of independent persona early on, and um, and that helped me as I as I went through life. So mm. interesting. I mean, I'm I'm also in the family of five, and I'm the youngest as well. So oh, well, somehow oh, <laughs> I can so you can that. identify <laughs> uh, when people say, "Oh, you've been spoiled," and you're like, "No, no, I've, I've just been <laughs> left alone." <laughs> <laughs> to some extent, yeah, some being extent. independent. Yeah. So, so maybe we can talk a little bit about um, some of the significant events that happened in your life. Okay, um, I guess um, the significant um, or turning points, mm -hmm. significant events or turning points. Uh, the way I view them, I view them as, as uh, points in time where I've had to make decisions uh, or was uh, triggered into choices mm -hmm. that um, that moved my life in a direction that was unex unexpected at mm -hmm. that point in time. Um, so uh, perhaps I can share quickly a few of the turning points. I, mm -hmm. I'm using the turning points as, as the, the points in time when I've actually moved continents or, or, uh, or moved directions in career. Mm -hmm. And I think my, the first one was when I uh, decided that I wanted to go study in the, in the UK. Mm -hmm. um, in my family, my two older sisters, uh, uh, went into medicine and architecture in Sudan, and uh, my two older brothers followed in, into my dad's footsteps and, and mm -hmm. went to study uh, in the UK. And um, so I decided I'm gonna you know, do what the boys do as opposed to <laughs> uh, do what the girls did. And, yep. um, and I went to the UK. And um, of course, again, I, I um, <laughs> decided to study construction, <laughs> which wasn't a very um, traditional, a very traditional yeah. choice. Uh, I was the, the only female in the program at that point. And, uh, and um, I think that was a turning point because I, I, I made a choice very early on that affected many of my um, subsequent choices. And, mm -hmm. um, and it also um, gave me the, the ability to, to get out of my comfort it's zone. It's very interesting to me that, that you mentioned a few points. 
first is that you basically did not follow the sisters. You followed the boys. Your dad studied in the UK. And, and, and also, I think, what you said is that you, you want to do something that is non-traditional, which is really interesting to me. I think I, 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 at that point, I was 16, so I, I wasn't mm -hmm. thinking that it's non-traditional. I was thinking it's what I wanted to do. Um, I wanted, you know, I had uh, one of my older sisters was an architect, so I, I liked construction, I liked buildings, mm -hmm. I, I liked the fine art and the finer things in life that came with it, and I, and um, and, but I was good at physics and math, and so, <laughs> so, and I wasn't the, you know, the best of artists. Let's put it this way, I didn't have that talent, so. Um, so construction for me just seemed natural mm. uh, in a cognitive and, and, a, and, a, and an academic way. Um, I didn't think it was that I would go in and be the only female yeah. um, mm. in, a, in a, 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 a cohort of you know, Anglo-Saxon males, right? I didn't, <laughs> I didn't think that way, but, um, uh, but it turned out that way. And, um, mm. and, you, and you stayed. I never looked back. Yeah. <laughs> I guess, so. It's amazing that you persisted, you stayed there, and then you finished everything, and then kind of brought you to the next stage of in your life, I guess? I, I, it, the next stage, I kind of then also, and perhaps that's what I was doing, I was following in my dad's footsteps as opposed to, um, as opposed to, you know, the, the typical, typical mm. uh, footsteps. And I, um, I had planned that I was going to go into, um, and that's, that's the second turning point, by the way. I was going to go into my graduate studies in my final year in, at, at university. Mm -hmm. I had planned that I was going to pursue graduate studies and MPhil and a PhD in, um, uh, in management, and I um, uh, did all the work for it. Uh, got accepted at, uh, at at my father's alma mater at uh, at Brasenose College, and uh, and then that summer, as I graduated, mm -hmm. uh, my late father gets diagnosed with um, with terminal cancer. I'm sorry to hear That's that. Right. Um, and uh, of course, here I am, right? Like you, you plan life. Mm. And you have, um, uh, and maybe for all the, the younger um, students and, and females listening out there, life doesn't always go yeah. the way that you plan it. Yeah. And uh, I'm one month away from, from what I, uh, I had planned, and um, uh, things have to change. He's, mm -hmm. you know, he has to move to the US uh, to go to Johns Hopkins for treatment. Um, oh, okay. We are all needed around mm -hmm. him at different times because mm -hmm. everybody had whatever they needed to do. Right. And so the decision was to defer my acceptance mm -hmm. and go to the U.S. and and if my late father has not had not been diagnosed with terminal cancer, I mm -hmm. might have never uh, made it to the U.S. I see. But here I am in you know in my early twenties, right. and so that is my second turning point. The way I look at it, mm -hmm. um, it was for family reasons, mm -hmm. um, but it, um, it 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 pushed me out of my comfort zone, which was the U.K. at that point in time, to go to the U.S. and. Right, right. And I ended up starting my master's program at GW there at George Washington. So, yeah. yeah. So wow. I mean, yeah. I mean, I I in a way, a different continent. See, a every turning a exactly, point. Exactly <laughs> right. You're moving, and th th that's always something like something that drives you there, in a sense. Um, to me, I guess your second turning point is um, a blessing in disguise to some extent. I guess yeah. um, definitely, if you were to stay in the UK, it might turn out differently moving to the States and, I guess, studied at GW is basically, you know, totally different thing. Yeah, I mean, uh, George, it was also the convenience of the location because mm. my father had to, uh, you know, get treatment at Johns Hopkins, uh, which mm. was in Maryland, and, and GW was the pro it was a project management program. Um, what's interesting, too, is that then when I started at GW, it was also, okay, I'm going to do my master's and PhD mm. while I'm trying to help while my dad is, is, is receiving treatment. Uh, but at the same time, um, it, it ends up being another, another turning point, uh, is that before I finish my master's, I get offered the job to go into consulting. One of my oh. professors um, at that point in time was a was part-timer. He was mm -hmm. an adjunct um, um, lecturer an adjunct, who okay. worked in, in oil and gas, oil and petrochem. I see. And he said, you know, do you want to continue in a, PH, in a PhD program or do you want to go and work for uh, oil and gas consulting? And I, and I said, uh, of course, it's an opportunity. I can always come back to, to a PhD right, program. Right. And that's how I ended up in, in oil and petrochem. Okay. So, so I guess <laughs> twists and turns right, uh, right. take but us that, in different directions. Exactly, but that's also a choice 
exactly. for you, right? I mean, you made that decision. You can definitely just stay if you want to stay and continue your PhD, but you choose to actually work and explore whatever is that is out there and also take the adventure in a way. Exactly. Right? Exactly. So, so can, can you share a little bit about um, the experience of working and then, you know, what make you um, somehow go back and do your PhD? Okay. So, um, so at that point in time, as you said, it's a choice and that's why I call turning points. Um, yep. There are points in, in time where we make decisions so right. or we make choices. Um, it, it, and also, uh, sometimes we feel, uh, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a tough uh, situation, but it ends up being a blessing to yeah. a certain degree. Mm -hmm. um, it's not, it's not just that it's you're making a choice. It's always in life, opportunities come up, yeah, yeah. and we need to take advantage of those opportunities. Mm -hmm. And and it's 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 an art and a science to be able to identify an opportunity and not let it go. Mm -hmm. So the uh, oil and gas consulting was also interesting because once again it's it's a very male dominated yeah. environment. I was yeah. in my early twenties. Um, I am different. I mean, I look different in the in the mm -hmm. oil and gas market, and and um, and you know we're dealing with the Fortune 100 yeah. oil and, and and petrochem and so on. It's 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 a certain environment that you have to walk into a room, and you need to gain credibility yeah. within the first 30 seconds. Yeah. If yeah. you don't do that, uh, you've lost the audience. Yeah. And and I think it taught me very quickly mm -hmm. that I need to do my homework. <laughs> And I and I need to make sure that I I uh, dot my eyes, cross my t's, whatever uh, you want to <laughs> call it, very early on, um, mm. and be able to control the room that that you stepped into to get wow. what you need to get accomplished. Um, that is consulting in a nutshell yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, for me. Uh, you asked also um, about the other turning point and why I left consulting and came back mm -hmm. to to academia. So I, I have a lot of turning points, guys. I mean, <laughs> you, should, you should have known that. <laughs> um, I, I came back to academia. It was also somehow connected to my late father. Uh, he passed away mm, uh, sorry. In, in 2002. And so I was in consulting. I, I was getting the hang of it, uh, been doing that for some time. Mm. Um, it, it, when you do somebody close to you and, and somebody that you've been very... Um, very um, um, attached to for a very long time, and you've been very inspired by and, and, mm. and guided by, y you feel that you need to reprioritize your life. Mm -hmm. And at that point in time, I felt I could not continue to make deep pockets deeper. Mm. Uh, so um, I needed to do something that was more, had more direct impact uh, on lives. Mm. And I, um, I chose to go back and, and, and do a PhD in, in, in sustainable uh, construction or in construction engineering and project oh. management at UT Austin. Uh, so that was a choice. Uh, also, another turning point to, right. to quit a, a paying job and, yeah, and go yeah. be a student again. So, right. um, um, but it, you know, I never looked back from that because I, um, and even now, uh, if you told me, would you give up teaching and, and, mm -hmm. and being in touch with young lives and, and, and that and, and go back to consulting, I'll tell you. As far as I stand here right now, or mm -hmm. sit right here, I, I'm, I won't do that because I left it for a reason, wow. and I joined academia for re rejoined academia for a reason. Wow. So that so is really, really inspiring. I mean, to, to be honest, and to always be one of the first Thank and you. taking all the challenges. And when you did Thank your you. PhD in sustainable construction, it's, it's basically it's the only woman there too. Uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but now things are changing. I mean, yep. I mean, just recently there there um, in the U.S. The, there's major funding for um, getting a million women in the construction workforce. They're, so they're working towards that. Yeah, been announced very recently. So right. things are changing. Um, the thing is, it, 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 men and women are the same, ultimately. We just you would love to think about yeah. yeah. We, we, yeah. <laughs> but uh, but we uh, we're put in different situations and we yeah. all have to deal with them. Yeah. I guess. Right. So. Well, that is again, like I said, it's really inspiring. Um, I'm I'm hoping that um, all the young girls out there or any women that that's looking for something to hang on to or you know to to get inspired. I'm pretty sure that people can relate to that. So thank you again, Salwa, for joining us today. You're welcome. Thank and you. Thank you. Yeah.